With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Tuesday, May 17th, 2016. Governor Snyder says that it is possible that he deleted some emails about the Flint water situation prior to 2013. Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal reports that the governor responded to several questions from the Congressional Committee on Government Reform and Oversight, and those written comments were just released by the ranking member, U.S. Representative Elijah E. Cummings of Maryland. In a statement from Snyder's attorney, it was alleged that the governor periodically reviewed his emails and either put them in folders or deleted them. Recent litigation requires that all emails relevant to Flint are to be retained. Governor Snyder disagreed with his attorney's statements, then backtracked and said that he misunderstood the question and noted that although emails prior to April 2013 were not part of the requirement, he does not recall deleting any relevant documents and that it is unlikely that he did. Senator Cummings recently said in a statement that the governor's written answers to the committee raise a whole new set of concerns about the accuracy of his testimony before Congress in March. However, Anna Heaton Press Secretary for Snyder told the Flint Journal that all documents relevant to the litigation have been retained and produced and continued cherry picking of legal documents and partisan attacks do nothing to help Flint residents and the governor's focus remains on helping the people of Flint. The U.S. Senate is set to approve funding for President Obama's request for money to combat the tropical Zika virus. The Associated Press reports that the president originally asked for $1.9 billion to combat the disease that is native to tropical locales in countries such as Brazil, India, and Singapore. The Senate is set to vote on a bill that would provide $1.1 billion through a procedural vote attached to an unrelated spending bill. The CDC reports that the Zika virus, a mosquito-borne illness native to tropical environs, is known to cause mild symptoms such as fever, rash, and red eye that last about a week. The CDC notes that there is no vaccine for the illness, and people who are traveling to tropical countries should consider wearing long sleeves and pants and stay in buildings with air conditioning or that use screen doors. A recent study by the Ministry of Health of Brazil suggests that the Zika virus may have a possible association with birth defects. However, in the same study, the scientists noted that the birth defects implicated are also caused by infections during pregnancy and exposure to toxic substances. The Associated Press also notes that outbreaks are unlikely in the U.S. and all cases of the virus reported in the country have been associated with overseas travel. And finally, the CIA Inspector General's office has acknowledged that it mistakenly destroyed its only copy of a Senate torture report. Senator Dianne Feinstein of California, vice chair of the Select Committee on Intelligence, sent the director of the CIA a letter requesting that he, as the director of the CIA, provide a new copy of the study to relevant recipients immediately. Senator Feinstein noted in her letter that a prompt response would allay her concerns that this was anything more than an accident. According to Yahoo News, this incident is the latest in an ongoing battle over a report on the effectiveness of enhanced interrogations. The study that was allegedly destroyed is a 6,700-page report compiled over the course of years by the Senate Intelligence Committee that contains details about the agency's use of torture to obtain information from suspects. The study concluded that the CIA's interrogations were far more brutal than the agency had publicly acknowledged and produced unreliable intelligence. A panel of judges recently ruled that the document was not subject to the Freedom of Information Act, saying that the study is a congressional document and therefore not subject to FOIA requests. Senator Feinstein and Senator Patrick Leahy of Vermont, on the other hand, are petitioning the chief of the National Archives to formally declare that the report is a federal record that must be preserved in the public interest. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.